Today on CyberWork Hacks, InfoSec Bootcamp instructor Tommy Gover is talking about CompTIA's Network Plus certification and the best ways to earn continuing education credits to keep your Net Plus certification up to date. Any sort of vendor that may come to your uh, organization to showcase some new technology, some conference that you've attended, whether it's specifically network focused or if it's cloud or security focused, it's all networking. And so you can use all of those um, just ways to document to prove that you are engaged uh, in the industry. Tommy offers tips and hacks for creating, executing, and documenting projects that will earn you CEUs. I wonder what it's going to be like to set up a new firewall, to uh, set up a, a new uh, wireless network just for my IoT devices at home, for all those Internet of Things devices that you've got. All of those things can be documented and captured and uh, are available for credit. And reminds us that learning is a cascading process. And if you've got quite a few certs from CompTIA that need renewing, it might just be time to escalate things one level. Step up certification is one of the things that, that CompTIA does to allow you to uh, renew your certification. So that's that's a way that I, I like to do that and just to stay, um, stay in tune with what the, the new changes are in the field. Well, I know what that means. Keep it right here for today's cyber work hack. The IT and cybersecurity job market is thriving. Bureau of Labor Statistics predicts 377,500 new IT jobs annually. You need skill and hustle to obtain, obtain these jobs, of course, but the good news is that cybersecurity professionals can look forward to extremely competitive salaries. That's why InfoSec has leveraged 20 years of industry experience drawing from multiple sources to give you, CyberWork listeners, an analysis of the most popular and top-paying industry certifications. You can use it to navigate your way to a good-paying cybersecurity career. So to get your free copy of our Cybersecurity Salary Guide ebook, just click the link in the description below. It's right there near the top, just below me. You can't miss it. Click the link in the description and download our free Cybersecurity Salary Guide ebook. Your cybersecurity journey starts here. Now, let's get the show started. Welcome to a new episode of Cyberwork Hacks. The purpose of this spinoff of our popular Cyberwork podcast is to take a single fundamental question and give you a quick, clear, and actionable solution to that problem, or new insights into how to utilize InfoSec products and training to achieve your work and career goals. So today's guest, Tommy Gober, is an InfoSec instructor, and he is our InfoSec bootcamp instructor for several of CompTIA's essential entry-level certifications, and one of them is the Network Plus. If you've been watching Hacks for the last couple of weeks, We've been talking all things Net Plus, and we're going to wrap it up here with a part four. Today's Cyberwork Hack, uh, Tommy is going to walk us through CompTIA's continuing education unit requirements and how to accrue CEUs to renew your Network Plus certification. So thank you for joining me. Hey, good to see you again. Absolutely. So Tommy, let's start with the cert renewal process. So when does, why does CompTIA require cert holders to pursue additional learning in order to keep their cert current? Well, uh, this is something that's come around. It's been around for, I, I want to say like, I think it started in like 2010, okay. uh, been around for quite a while. And I think what shaped it, and this is, um, you know, I was somewhat of a, uh, uh, I was in the industry at the time. And so I, there was this perception that people with certifications, well, they had the knowledge, but they didn't have the skills and Someone might have a certification from five, eight, ten years prior, and they just didn't really know the content at all because the content had moved on from that uh, from that moment. And so, what CompTIA did was they created this uh, continuing education structure where every three years you have to re-up, renew your certification. There's a few different ways to do that, but that's really what kind of drove that was you need to prove that you're staying current. You can't just pass it and then rest on your laurels. You have to stay, stay engaged with the industry. Otherwise it will expire and you'll have to come back and recast again in the future. Yeah. I, when we think of, you know, different types of security professionals or IT professionals or uh, network admins, you have a couple of different sort of archetypes in your head. You have the person who's who's always on top of it and trying new things and, you know, breaking out the new software and, 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 and breaking it, putting it back together. And then the person that's just been there for 30 years and they just keep doing the same thing and they push this button to get here and so forth. And so I guess uh, CompTIA is trying to sort of discourage 
the latter while encouraging the former because it just it makes a, a more robust right. uh, cybersecurity ecosystem, I suppose. Right, right. Yeah. So uh, with the Security Plus and other security focused certifications, I feel like the idea of visualizing what CEU credits look like in that situation are maybe a little more intuitive, like if you're writing a blog about a CTF you solved or you're you're documenting a class you took or a lecture or you're you know, you're basically showing your work, as they used to say in, in math class and so forth. Um, and I'm wondering if there's a similar sort of path for network plus CEUs. I mean, I don't feel like you solve as maybe you solve as many problems. But it, it, prove me wrong here. But like, do you what 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 sorts of things do you document or do to make sure that you're earning your CEUs for a, a network plus certification? Great question. When the uh, in, in the industry, when you're a practitioner, um, when you're working in the networking space and with, uh, with security, all of those things that you just mentioned of, um, you know, engaging with a CTF and writing a blog post about that, sharing what you've did with this or with that, um, it's all the same sorts of activities, uh, because so much of security is of cybersecurity is involved with network. So much of networking is involved with cybersecurity. Uh, the two go hand in hand. It's really hard to do, to draw that line. It's kind of that, um, yeah, have you ever heard it? it's called the fallacy of the beard? <laughs> Where you're like, at what point does, uh, you know, what point does facial hair stop becoming stubble and starts, that becomes a, a beard. Like, I know it when I see it. You maybe have heard that one. It, it's the same thing with networking and security. They, they go hand in hand. It's hard to have one without having the other. Uh, and so this, uh, the, the process of, um, of just working in the, uh, in the industry, um, is going to be something that you can document for a continuing education. Um, any sort of vendor that may come to your uh, organization to showcase some new technology, some conference that you've attended, whether it's specifically network focused or if it's cloud or security focused, it's all networking. And so you can use all of those. Um, just ways to document, to prove that you are engaged, uh, in the industry, setting up a home lab. Um, you know, Chris, before we hit record, we were talking about raspberry Pi, little and, and making a home lab computer. And so just setting that up, if, if your goal is to do some sort of, you know, hacker tinkering kind of setup, you're going to be tinkering with the networking. So that applies as well. Um, so all of these things can be done, um, taking on some sort of a project, like, I wonder what it's going to be like to set up a new firewall, to, uh, set up a, a new, uh, wireless network just for my IOT devices at home for all those internet of things, devices that you've got, all of those things can be documented and captured and, uh, are available for credit. That's great. Yeah. I, I hadn't thought of the idea of rather than solving a problem that's in the world, like a certain type of malware or a certain type problem. Of intrusion you make it you make the problem and then you solve it that's the way i learn i always well, i put a project out there and i just go for it so yeah that's real that's real smart too because it, it it takes you out of your your sort of comfort area and it you know it also sort of it it does literally what it's supposed to do it increases your thinking about what a network is because yeah you're, you're asking yourself to like think beyond uh what you learned in class so um what advice do you have to make sure that you're not leaving the process of earning CEUs until the last minute before your cert expires? Because I know just about anything, you know, exams due next week. Oh, I haven't started studying or uh, my diorama's due or whatever. Can professionals incorporate CEU earning behaviors into their daily operation? Yes. Just staying, uh, staying reminded that you have got these. If you're currently a CompTIA, uh, certification holder. This is your reminder. You need to be logging. So here we go. It's just, uh, that conference that you went to this year, that, um, that event that you went to last year, documenting all that you have three years to attain, uh, the correct number of, uh, continuing education units, uh, CEUs, and then CompTIA will want you to pay, um, to have those CEUs evaluated. And then they're going to, uh, that would then renew your certification, but keeping track of all that, honestly, Chris is not very fun. It's not, it, it's not super thrilling to, you know, keep growing this little packet you've got down in your desk drawer that you keep all of your stuff, you know, that keep adding in, 
uh, these uh, signature sheets that your supervisor signs off whenever you've completed some new project or uh, having that vendor just like, oh yeah, I'm here from, you know, such and such company signing off on that. It's not terribly fun. I, I'm a learning junkie. I love learning and the way that, uh, that I really, um, enjoy renewing my certifications. This sounds weird and maybe why I'm an instructor. I like taking certifications. And I like taking other certifications that I like leveling up my understanding. And so reaching for that next step up certification is one of the things that, that CompTIA does to allow you to, uh, renew your certification. So that's, that's a way that I, I like to do that. And just to stay, um, stay in tune with what the, the new changes are in the field. Every right. time a new CompTIA certification comes out, I like to take it and make sure that I'm checking off uh, those boxes that they've got, but also it renews my, my prior existing certifications and it helps kind of stretch my brain as I'm learning that new material. Yeah. I'm, I'm putting myself out there where there's stuff that I may not know. And so I'm going to tackle that on that. So you can, uh, you know, keeping documenting, you know, uh, quarterly, uh, you know, annually making sure that you've got a certain number of credit hours, uh, that year from that year, that's going to be helpful in that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And th th I guess that's, that's a, that's a sort of a common thing. If you learn the next level up, you, you sort of get like an auto, auto complete of the certifications right. beneath it. Is that right? Something like yeah. That? And, and I also, I'm going to share my screen over here. Yeah, please. Um, there is, this is from the CompTIA website. If you go to CompTIA.org, you can uh, search for this. And, um, this tells you how many continuing education units, CEUs you need for the various CompTIA certifications. Great. Um, right off the, the beginning, you need 20, uh, hour, 20 CEUs, uh, uh, 20 education CEU credits to renew your A plus, um, or if you went for like the data plus, um, after A plus, if you went to network plus, you're going to need 30 over a three year period. So roughly 10 credits per year. Once you move up into security plus, then you're going to be needing 50 per year. Uh, and as you keep pushing the envelope higher. <laughs> When you, uh, 50 when per, you per three year, but yeah, I'm no, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Every three okay, years. Let me make sure. Yeah. The, the math doesn't work out. But... Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the pen test, uh, CYSA each needs 60. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, finally up at the very, um, high oh, end yeah. with yeah. cap for security X, uh, we've got 75, uh, credits around every three years. And so these are the, the number of, uh, CEUs that you need on here on this page. Down below, it says that, um, you need to, uh, how much do you need all of this? And you can't do all of your, so you mentioned like blog posts, uh, earlier. Mm -hmm. You can't just write a bunch of blog posts and have that count forever. Right. And so that's very, very what's that? You gotta be varied. Yeah. You gotta vary it. You gotta, you know, come up with some variety in there. And so a blog post can count for a certain, um, amount of that, but then, um, uh, some training can also account for some of that. Um, another way is to get non CompTIA entry certs. Those can also, mm. that's, that's surprising for a lot of folks. So we're you know, you're, you're here in the CompTIA stack, but maybe for work, you're doing an AWS or a Cisco certification. If you take those after you have your CompTIA certification, that can then count back for your CompTIA renewal as, as part of that. It's not going to auto renew it, but it will count for the, some of those CEU credits that you have. Um, I always like that, you know, like you said, the blog post, I always kind of laugh and joke around with, uh, writing a book, uh, writing a book does not co completely cover, uh, renewal. I was like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. that's part of the, part of, uh, the, the stuff that they've got on here. And of course, work related experiences, like documenting, having your supervisor sign off on you, um, taking part in some, uh, related activity. Very, very helpful. But like right. I said, the other way you can do this is to, um, renew with a higher level certification. So if you have a plus, uh, data, data sys, um, any of those, uh, those are just kind of standing on their own. But when you pass network plus, it will renew your a plus automatically, like no further work needed. Just, it's just automatically going to do that. Marvelous. When you push the envelope ahead and you get on with security plus it renews both your network and a plus. And so there's kind of this cascading effect with it. I really, really like Art. that. 
um, if you go with, uh, you know, if we're talking about network plus when, if you go with Linux plus, that's another way, uh, to renew your a plus when you go with cloud, cloud can renew both a plus and Linux, or with this new one, it does a plus net plus and Linux plus, uh, so, we, you know, just keep pushing yourself ahead. You're learning a little bit more. And then, uh, I mentioned CYSA and pen test. Those are, uh, in the CompTIA sphere, they're, they're kind of on the same footing. They each renew security plus network and a plus, but they also kind of cross renew one another. So pen test renews CYSA, CYSA renews pen test. And so they kind of do each other and the ones down below. And then lastly, CASP or what's been re rebranded as uh, security X as part of the expert series from CompTIA, it renews all of those that I just mentioned, uh, CYSA pen test security net plus and a plus all in there. That's a fun way to, to do this is just keep learning more, keep growing, uh, your understanding and it just naturally renews, uh, your content so that you finally get to the point where I'm going to renew all of these certifications yeah. just by renewing this one. That makes it quite easy, uh, to do that as well. Yeah. And that's, that's smart too. Cause it's not, it's not the sort of um, stereotype of the of the cert collector because you're not just grabbing things to grab things. Like each of these really does, you know, sort of combine on the. You know, if you're getting cast plus, yeah, of course you know a plus. Of course you know, yes. like you, you know, that's like that's like a Hercules level certification. So uh, that's very smart and and I, I think really really good advice here. So uh, well, Tommy Gilbert, thank you for for walking us through this. This is one of the questions that. Uh, so many of our students ask, and so I'm really glad that you were able to sort of lay it out so plainly. Yeah, and I, I love it. We also mentioned here, Chris, too, uh, don't put it off as kind of one of my parting thoughts. Mm -hmm. And if you are already one of uh, InfoSec's uh, bootcamp participants, you get 90 days access to all the material um, on our InfoSec skills page, including mm -hmm. some of those CEU videos. So if you are hard pressed, if you have put it off, you can get a one-stop shop just by going to InfoSec skills and getting a, get access to it that way. And you're going to be able to, you know, breeze through all the material to, to make sure that you're staying current on your existing Fabulous. certifications. Love that. Well, Tommy Gilbert, thank you again for, for joining me today. This has been awesome. Thanks, Chris. See you around. Uh, thank you all for watching uh, this CyberWork hack. If you enjoyed it, share it with your friends, share it with your colleagues, share it in forums, social media accounts, anywhere you like. But best of all, Tell one person, word of mouth recommendation is how shows like this grow their audience uh, and keep robust. And make sure to subscribe to our podcast feed and our YouTube page. You can type in cyber work and infosec in any of them, and we'll be right there. You organize the color scheme. So if you have any topics you want us to cover, drop them in the comments, and we'll be happy to address them. Uh, this is Chris Senko and Tommy Gober wishing you happy learning. See you next time.